6 o'clock. Nice job, Eddie Scazzeri. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Boomer Esiason, Craig Carton, on the fan. And, of course, worldwide on CBS Sports Network. Got a great show for you today. Well, we didn't get great football, but you got a couple great offenses that uh, dominated at home. And you have a Super Bowl that, frankly, should be high-scoring and dramatic as the New England Patriots handle uh, the Steelers without any problem at all. Atlanta, previous to that, blows out Green Bay. No problem at all. And Super Bowl 51 is set. Atlanta, New England, game on. Good morning, Boomer. How are you today, buddy boy? Doing well, Craig, and you're right. The football was not great, but the quarterbacks for the winning teams were. And uh, Matt Ryan put an exclamation point on his season with yet another impressive performance against, uh, you know, Green Bay defense that, you know, we knew coming in was not going to be great. Right. And, you know, a lot of breaks for Atlanta to get to that point to where they are. That's why getting the second seed was good for them. Uh, it was good for them that Green Bay went in there and beat Dallas. Uh, and then, it, and then it, it was painfully obvious from the get-go that Kyle Shanahan was going to push the envelope, push the ball down the field. They weren't going to mess around like Dallas did for, a, uh, for about a quarter. And they were going to go after a beat-up secondary. And that's exactly yeah. what they did. And that's exactly what they should have done. Right. And then in New England, uh, Josh McDaniels uh, did what I kind of thought he would do anyway. He was going to spread them out. He was going to go up-tempo, no huddle. And for whatever reason now, Tom Brady 5-0 and against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Gillette Stadium, and his numbers are off the yeah, charts. Yeah, stupid. I mean, they're ridiculous. He looked fantastic. And he looked, he looked so much better than he did the week before. Yeah, that opening drive, you just knew in the opening drive. I mean, other than the fourth, uh, third, and uh, Well, Malcolm two. Mitchell dropped the ball. Right. I mean, I mean the pass is the right down. there. Everything I mean, was everything. right on the money. Yes, he yeah. was on the money. And uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. I, you know, I do a— uh, It's uh, annoying uh, almost. Well, I know. For most people around here, I'm sure <laughs> it is. But here, here's the thing about New England that is amazing. Next year, they will have, I think, the third or fourth most amount of money to spend in free agency if they want to spend it. They got to sign a couple of their, <laughs> so, you know, they have to sign a couple of their players, of course. Uh, number two, they did not lose either one of their coordinators to any of these job right. openings. Kyle Shanahan will be leaving Atlanta, going to San Francisco. So right. too bad for Matt Ryan. He finally has an offensive coordinator <clears throat> that knows him and knows him really well. And, sure. and, and it's not a, just designing the plays; it's calling the plays when. Uh, you call them and how you call them, and obviously he and Matt Ryan are in sync. So now Matt Ryan will lose his offense coordinator in the offseason. And then on top of all of that, Brady wants to come back and play for five more years. Right, which means we're all screwed. <laughs> right? I mean, it's just, uh, and, you know, think about this. Last year it was Chandler Jones and Jamie Collins were on that defense, both run out of there. And now this defense is as good right. if not better than it was at any point in time last year. They held, as Bill Belichick said, after the game, uh, Pittsburgh essentially to nine points for 50 minutes. That's, That's pretty right. damn good against that offense. And then, uh, you know, you, then you had the awkwardness between Bob Kraft and Jim Nance. And, you know, that's where the, you know, that 800-pound gorilla in the room is sitting there. And it's coming. And right. you know, it's, we all know it's coming. Right. I mean, and that's, uh, you know, the results of uh, the Flatecade and all the other nonsense. Well, and, right. the, uh, and the heat that Robert Kraft took from his own fan base sure. for not fighting. Well, at first he wrote the million-dollar check and, and the draft and pick and said, I got no okay. problem. Got, you know, we're okay, guilty. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, things turned on him uh, when uh, Brady got suspended. And then he was like, I thought we had a deal, basically. So you're right. It'll be very interesting because he goes from, by all accounts, the owner's best friend and biggest advocate, I mean the commissioner's, to uh, obviously what took place. But, you know, it's too bad we have to hear about the flaking and all that crap again. I'll tell you why. Because as much as, as a Jet fan, it pains me to see those, those guys, I mean, they were just money good, as, as was Atlanta. Like, whatever they wanted to do, they did, right? That's right. I was actually surprised they didn't go for it on fourth and one of the very first well, drive you know, of the game. Both, both defensive coordinators just had no answers for the opposing offense and for different reasons. But if you can't get any sort of pressure on the opposing quarterback you're and done. you're going to let these guys uh, just stand back there and just kind of rip away, there's yep. no, against secondaries that are either young or beat up, uh, you're going to get what we saw yesterday. So I'm not surprising at all that both of those offenses played really well. Yeah, here's the problem. It's what you just said, though. You know, even if New England doesn't win the Super Bowl, it's we're screwed for another three, four, five years. It ain't going to get any better. Like the New York Jets are not winning a division anytime soon. That's not even on the table. Wow. Well, you know, New England's just going to keep getting better. And unless I, and, there's injuries or something and then like that. We talk a lot on this show yes. about why guys like Rodgers, <laughs> I got to say Ryan now, and Brady are special. And they're special 
because of what a lacrosse player did yesterday and Chris Hogan, who's a wonderful football player too, obviously. That's the difference. That offense puts a guy that you never heard of who was a lacrosse player first and a football player second and puts that guy in that system. And all he did yesterday was nine catches, 180 yards, and two touchdowns. He had the same it's stats. unbelievable. Had the same stats as Julio Jones. Right. The same stats. And, you know, interestingly <laughs> enough, not just Chris Hogan, but it's also Julian Edelman. Uh, right. And I mean, and when you watch how Tom Brady and Matt Ryan and all these guys play and raise the level of play to the players that they play with, right. then you understand why they are considered It's unbelievable. Like, even Nance and Sims yesterday said that when uh, Hogan was originally, the first team he was on was the Niners, the Dolphins, whoever it was, before he went to the Bills and actually got to play, that they said in that, that one summer, he was like 7-11, he was always open. How did he not get to play at all? You know? Because he's playing with the wrong quarterback. How's a guy like that on the Bills and over four years has what about 15, 18 catches a year? I'm gonna put him right? in, I'm gonna put him in a category of it's players. Unbelievable. I'm gonna put him in a pay category that uh, of players that are in the right spot at the right time with the right team. And he's one of those players, as is Dak Prescott for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, that's fair, that's fair. I mean, if you had Dak Prescott and Chris Hogan on the New York Jets right now, you'd be <laughs> screaming the holy hell that that was your wide receiver and quarterback because they wouldn't have the team around them. To allow them to actually accentuate who they are as players. Right. And if you're Chris Hogan, look, all you got to do is be a part of a group of five players. Uh, just go out there and, as Bill Belichick will say, just do your job, man. Don't do anybody else's job. Don't do anything. We're not asking you to do anything, you know, heroic. Right. Just do what we ask you to do. And then it's up to Josh McDaniels to basically put together a game plan. And when they did the flea flicker with Deion Lewis, is like, Oh man, this is like they were locked is, in. They knew locked what was in, up. pressing all the right buttons, and then the and again, coordinator. Every, every, sorry, everyone's always open. Well, the defense coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Keith Butler, had no answer. They had yeah. no answer. Like, yeah. all right, do I blitz? And if I do blitz, I can't get home. And when I'm not blitzing, then I'm only rushing three. And then Tom Brady's finding guys wide open in the secondary, down the field, in the zones. I mean, it's it's a tough spot for a defensive coordinator when you're playing offenses that basically are able to do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. I'll tell you what, though, it also shows you Jets and Giants how far away you are because you ain't close. I mean, well, the Giants are the Giants actually. No, they're not. I took stock of it yesterday. We're just watching Atlanta and watching an offense. You know, on all cylinders with a quarterback that's got total command of what he's doing, receivers that always get open. Obviously, a great running attack when they want to use that. And I say to myself, we know the Jets suck, so I'm not even even looking at it that way. But the New York Giants aren't close. They're eleven five. They are not even close yeah, to are. that. No, sure they're not. They no, they're not. I'm talking about I'll offense. You, I will tell you, they one are thing. not even the close. Gi the, Gi the Giants at least have a legitimate defense. I mean, Green Bay yes. was patchwork defense, injuries all over the place. They were getting hurt in the beginning of the game. They lost guys. I mean, I mean, Sam. Uh, well, who uh, who went out early for them? Somebody went out early for them in the secondary. I forget who it was, but anyway. Look, I would say that New England and Atlanta are the two healthiest teams left standing. That's fine. Uh, and this is no a New England team without Gronkowski. Right. And the fact that Gronkowski got injured again probably stops the New England Patriots from ripping up his contract and giving him more money. Yeah, but it shows you how good they are because, you know, Bennett's doing great for them. No Gronk and it don't matter. They just blow people out. They're a three-point favorite now which is the lowest points where they've had, I think, uh, all year since Brady came back. Then a couple other things. You know, it sucks if you're someone in the hotel when it happens, but don't we know what's going to happen? Can't you, can't, you, uh, can't you somehow prevent some moron from uh, pulling mm. fire alarms? I'm sure the Patriots weren't upset about it. Of you course know, not. Whatever you can do to you know, hamper the other is, team, right? I mean, this is just some crazy fan going half-cocked on him. So, you know, I mean, they got the guy. Yeah, they got the guy. They arrested him. Oh, shocker. It's what they, it's he what was they from call, Boston. Yeah, it's what they call home field advantage. You know, right. maybe he was the guy that let the air out of the balls. You never know. Same guy. Then, maybe he was related to that guy. You had a fire alarm go off at the stadium. And uh, the they showed uh, you know, the media fleeing the stadium. The media. Everybody out. The media. And I bring that up because how many times have you been in a building when a fire alarm goes off and you ignore it? Here yeah, every you, every you, week. You can't do it, though. You ignore it. I ignore every fire alarm I hear. Why? For two reasons. Because you Number smell one, smoke or gas, and then all no, of a sudden no, it's too late and the whole thing blows up? Because there's nothing worse, like in my apartment, 
Yeah, uh, every now and then the batteries are going dead. Yeah. And the damn thing goes, it chirps. It chirps. <laughs> and, like, and you know what you do? You <laughs> dis I disable it. I take the battery out. Yeah. And then if I remember, I go to the drugstore, I get a nine volt, I put it back in. And it was a, this is a lousy public service. But, that, but that's why. You, you should always have working fire yeah, alarms. Yeah, you have to. And smoke alarms. But the night before an AFC championship game, in a hotel, you know it's a prank. Yeah, don't, you know oh, it's a hoax. Well, listen, uh, we, my Cincinnati Bengal team got food poisoned the night before the Oakland Raider playoff game, in which uh, Bo Jackson got hurt. And hey, uh, do you um, don't you remember that you have to change the batteries on daylight savings day or something like that? Yeah, right? you change your nine volts out. Well, you should yeah. only change when they're dead. Well, now, now they have them when you buy the smoke alarms. The batteries are good for like five to ten years or something. Not why, why they, they just use put special the thing, batteries. Well, they should have a battery in there, but they should always have it tied up to the electric just in case, right? Right. You still need a battery, though. Yeah. You got to have a battery. You got to have a backup. You need a battery. Right. You have to, because what happens if your house loses power or there's like a glitch? How about, you, how about, your, boy, like how about your boy Arthur Blank after the game yesterday? Was that guy having fun or what? Yeah, not like he a 90 year old guy uh, worth a billion dollars dancing in the locker room. You know what he great, said right? after the game? He goes, Look, at the end of the day, I'm taking my entire organization to the Super Bowl. No, he's not. Yes, he is. You think the girl working checkouts yes. at Home Depot in Brooklyn's going to the Super Bowl? Well, no, She's I mean not. the Atlanta Falcon organization, not the Home Depot oh, organization. I thought he meant Home Depot. No. He's taking you he's taking every That's employee. He said so. He goes, oh, yeah, how's he buying employee. tickets? Yep, boy, be he'll get it done. Believe me. I mean it's gotta be like a thousand people. Uh right? yeah, I don't know in an organization. I, I don't I don't know how many are in that organization in particular, but he basically said I'm taking the entire organization. Do you think ticket prices for the Super Bowl will be great? Or not as great as it would have been if it had it been uh, New Rogers. England Green Bay. No, I think it's going to be good because you have the number one scoring defense versus the number one scoring offense. And you have two great quarterbacks. You have the MVP of the league, Tom well, Brady. We're going to talk about it. I think people are going to be tuning in to see whether or not the Patriots win and the awkwardness of the commissioner having to hand the Lombardi trophy over to Bob Kraft and Tom Brady on the dais. Yeah. And not only that, how they. How, what they say verbally about him, right? Meanwhile, while that was going on, the New York Knicks were finding another new crushing way to lose a basketball game over the weekend. To, to by the way, the Phoenix Suns, the worst team in the Western Conference. Yeah, and, so I don't uh, want to hear about missing shot. That 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 game shouldn't even been that close. Never should have gotten to it. I agree, hundred percent. They should have won that game by fifteen yeah, points. It was like the Philly game. It was like the one of them. I mean, it's just this team has now become um, the worst. Final five minutes of a ball game team, maybe in Nick history. Can I, can I just say one thing about what basically transpired over the last ten days, and that is that Carmelo and, and Jackson supposedly had a meeting, and that you know Carmelo doesn't doesn't want to leave New York, right? But he would leave if, in fact, the Knicks asked him to waive his no trade clause. He would, but he wasn't really uh, very uh, specific about that, right? So because he should say, because really what he's talking about, look, if you send me to a team that I want to go to, I'll waive my no trade right, clause. Right, which is why you have a no trade clause. Because right. he made himself sound like if they want me to waive it, I'll waive it, you know. But that's not true. Right. It's got to be to a team that he wants to go to. So right. let's, let's not lose sight of that. And here's the other thing in regards to all that. I personally don't give a crap what Carmelo wants. I want Phil Jackson, if he still is in charge, to do what is in the best interest of the New York Knicks, not in the best interest of Carmelo Anthony. I don't care about that. I only care about the New York Knicks. And you know what? Uh, I, I always go back to it. Do you think that Bill Belichick would sit here and give Tom Brady a no trade clause? No. Of course not. No. Of course not. He would never hamstring his organization. Right. And this is with a guy that's won four Super Bowls. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's about what's best for the uh, franchise. It's not about not what's, what's best, best for, for you. And, you know, and the media plays into it. The media just sucks the whole thing right. up. And Carmelo says, oh, willing to accept oh, the trade. Way, now I'm on the side of Carmelo. Right. Oh, wait a minute. Time out. It, it's, it, it, at the end of the day, you're paying Phil Jackson to make decisions about your organization. And everybody should be on the table. Right. Every play, every, Carmelo's every, not going to Philadelphia. Every which way you want to try to improve your team, you should be able to do that. And they are hamstrung from doing that because of the idiotic contract that they gave him in the yeah. first place. No, listen, guilty as charged. Uh, what have I I've been saying for three years now? And now that all you of a sudden, hate Carmelo Anthony. No, I don't hate him. I'm just uh, what I'm what I'm telling you is that the Knicks are not. Look, we can lose with you. We can lose without you. With, without you. I mean, and I'd much rather lose without you right. if, in fact. 
it's going to give me some future if I can get a first round pick for you. If there's a team dumb enough out there to give us that. <laughs> Mind boggling. Again, it comes down to him taking a three pointer to win a game. In and out. Felt good. Looked good. You lost again. I get some bad basketball team. I mean, that's although the, I will say this, dude, they did go to Toronto and beat them by double digits yesterday. That being said, the New York Knicks have lost more games this year in unfathomable ways than I've seen over the course of a decade. You know, you know what really bothered me about the the Rangers season this year is no. that they, they've lost the teams at the bottom of the conference. You know, when you lose to Detroit, you lose to Buffalo, you lose to the Islanders. You're like, what are you doing, man? You got to. And I know that it's a long season, and any, any of these teams can win. On any given night in both of these leagues, but it, would, it was chap. It was making me angry that they were losing the, the teams that were out of the playoff run. Even yesterday, you know, one nothing ho hum game that they barely won. In because the last thing that you people are going to take is having a lightweight like Boomer, who's terrible, having a guy like this or some big head like Boomer. Yeah, he's a hockey fan. We can't have it anymore. We can't have it anymore. Yeah, it's nice. Well, Trump yeah, aiming, uh, Trump I'm trying to give you the real facts, not the alternative facts, okay? And what I'm trying to say here is, <laughs> is that, you know, if I'm a Knicks fan, yeah, and I'm, looking at, I'm looking at who they're losing to on their home court, the worst team in the Western Conference, the Pelicans, the Sixers, these teams Milwaukee. should be. Yeah, Milwaukee. Well, Milwaukee's a little bit different, but those teams should not be beating a super team yeah. in their own building. I'm sorry. In the NBA, Home court advantage is a distinct advantage. We got lots to do, right. of course. A hundred is supposed to be, yes. It is supposed to be. We'll get all your calls on the championship games. The good, the bad, the ugly. Hopefully you took both favorites and uh, had an easy Sunday afternoon cash-wise. Hell, hopefully you took my picks on Friday. 5-0. and oh. Spectacular. Stay with Boomer's picks. We had a great weekend. We get your calls, 877-337-6666. You got to love right this. Right after this. got to love this comment from Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> it's just at times almost felt like it was almost too big for some of the young guys. Boy, he's not beloved by his teammates. I can tell you that right now. Folks.